Welcome to the PBC 2020 NBA Draft Remote Film Room. My name is John Chepkevich, Director of Scouting for the PBC, and joining us today is the Southland Conference Defensive Player of the Year, Shamarcus Kennedy. What's going on, Shamarcus? Well, I'm doing good, man. Just chilling, man. How you doing? Doing pretty well. Hope you're holding up okay down in Alabama uh, during all of this uh, chaos and Hope you figured out a way to, you know, keep yourself in shape and get some shots up during this quarantine here. Yeah. Um, but, you know, while we're in this kind of unique circumstance and you're not really able to get in front of teams and work out in person in front of scouts and front office decision makers, wanted to do something a little different here and give you a chance to show everybody how you see the game, how you think through the game, talk through some areas that, translate particularly cleanly for you maybe a couple minor areas to brush up on and uh just chop up the tape together sound good yeah that sounds good all right let's do it so first we're going to jump into your strengths on the offensive side of the ball and this is going to be finishing at the rim and when you're particularly assertive and get yourself to the rim so here just a nasty poster dunk right here but want to just talk through how this play is developing and you want to maybe just give me your rundown of, you know, what this action is and, you know, how you decide to turn this corner and get to the rim. Um, so we was coming down the offense. We was going into um, concepts. It's a normal thing we always do on a fast break. Instead of going into a play, we'll just do that because, you know, concepts has a lot of different options you can go through. Yeah. And so throughout the game, the big who was guarding me right there, he was, like, trying to play on top of the screen so I can be able to trap the screen. And so – after me saying that, after a few times, I was like, I'm just going ahead and try to go to the rim. So I catch the ball. And that play, he just so happened to cheat again. And I, you know, I got it. And, you know, man, you know the end of the results. <laughs> what, do you particularly, like, get excited when you see an opportunity like this here when you know you might be able to dunk right on somebody and kind of send oh, yeah, it yeah. and establish yourself? You know, that's like once, twice a game. You know, that rarely happens for us. So you got to take advantage of every opportunity you get. For sure. And I think the way that you explained this was great. Like it's a little bit of a secondary break action, not a specific X and O play, but more of a read and react concept. And, uh, you know, this guy is anticipating the DHO exactly like you were saying, great read. And you're not at all fearful of the rim protection here. Just go right at them, <laughs> just forcing the action. And I think you were, uh, you know, maybe 67, 68% from the field this year. So you get a lot of, uh, really a lot of touches. looks like that and are able to finish through contact just really stu uh, stood out in the tape next one here see so you're coming through baseline uh, I guess a do you want to talk through what this action is here to begin this and then B, how you're able to kind of manipulate your defender to get that easy finish at the end um, I cannot remember what's the name of the play, but it was basically just a, a back screen to, um, to get me open because it's like throughout the season, it was starting to get hard for me to just be able to just post up and get the ball. So we had like find different options to get me the ball. Yeah. So we just did a basic back screen. And as soon as I caught it, you know, I just waited on him to try to um, get the contact and try to get the and one. Yeah, you did a nice job and, you know, kind of just using that one power dribble to get yourself some space, get over there, force the contact. And, you know, sometimes when bigs put the ball on the ground, uh, it gives the guard a little chance to dig down and help. But this mm -hmm. guy was way too far out, not digging in on you like he probably should have been, given how dominant you've been throughout the season. And you just take advantage of it. Great finish there. Do you think that you've gotten better at, finishing through contact uh, throughout your two years at McNeese? Oh, yeah, it's gotten a lot better. Um, I think it was a lot of work with Coach, Jim, Coach Jimmy in, in the weight room, man. You know, he took a lot of time with me in the weight room, getting me ready for the season. Yeah, I feel like that's been a definite improvement in your game is dealing with this physicality because you've always had the length, right? Like, what's your wingspan? Do you know by chance? 7'3". Seven, 7'3". Three. Seven, three. See, that's mm – -hmm. I mean – it looks really long on tape, but I figured it was seven plus, but that's, you know, that's what plus seven inches. You're like six, eight, six, nine, yeah, six, nine, six, nine. So plus six inches. So that's something that'll definitely stick out to teams as well and really help you to translate uh, to the next level, both on offense and on defense. Mm -hmm. So this next one here, 
Look at this little uh, <laughs> hero step there, man. Like, where'd that come from? That's some guard skills right there. Out um, of the that's, that's really something I do all the time. That's like one of yeah. my favorite moves, coming full court to somebody to do a Euro. And as soon as I seen the opportunity, I knew it was going to work anyway. Yeah, I mean, that was smooth, man. I, you don't see a lot of guys with your size being able to do that so smoothly, have the footwork, and then be able to finish up there with the left off the goofy foot layup. That's just really nicely done. Uh, do you think that you might be able to continue to grow and develop like in the open court like this and maybe grab and go a little bit uh, yeah. as you become a pro? Uh, yeah, so we're on this like maybe the next step for me being able to you know handle the ball better, maybe yeah. shoot the ball better. Yeah, so that's that's a big step for me. I'm going to have to be able to take it on yeah. the next level. Yeah, I think that's something we'll touch on when we get to the improvement area section on the handle and whatnot. Uh, but you know, that's encouraging that you have that coordination to be able to pull the euro off and that might be able to translate to handling as well mm. this one we're gonna just hit on another really like deft finish here where you're coming down on the break get it at the free throw line and kind of hang in the air and take the contact there and if mm. we run this back just a half second here when you catch it right here it seems like there's two guys here that might be able to slide in maybe try to take a charge on you or something when you catch this ball at the top, what's going through your mind as a way to get to the rim without being lured into a charge or something? Um, so it usually that that play right there happens happened a lot throughout the season. Yeah. It's always like I finish with my left hand. So usually every time I call it right here, everybody always try to like go for the ball. So I try to at least protect the ball as best as I can so I can be able to finish it. Yeah, and even right here, you're taking off from you know beyond the middle of the paint. This guy's right up in you, and you just float past him, take the contact, nice lefty finish. Uh, you know, you see that bear out in the numbers, but digging into the tape makes it all that more impressive. And then this one, I mean, the finish is nasty, but I think the move is even nastier. Look at when you catch this here. He thinks you're going up, you know, kind of reverse that on the baseline. Uh -huh. Have you worked a lot on your, I guess, A, your footwork and your ball yeah. tips near the rim? Yeah, I do. Um, with Coach Courtney, yeah. All the time, all the time. Yeah, and it's really subtle too, right? It's not like you are really dangling the ball the whole way out there, but you get like a slight little fake this way, bring it back uh -huh. around, get the easy dunk. Uh, just really nice move there. So now we're going to move over to potential improvement areas. And, okay. you know, like you were alluding to with the next step for you being ball handling, we wanted to just touch on your uh, perimeter game in general, right? Like, attacking on drives out on the perimeter where you have to take multiple dribbles here. I think that, you know, when you're assertive, like in some of those first clips and just take one bounce and get to the rim, you do a great job. But sometimes if you're spaced the whole way out to the three and have to take multiple dribbles, guys can dig in here and kind of rip it away from you a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, in the, you know, in the pros, the game's going to be a little more spaced out. You'll still get these opportunities kind of flashing through and cutting like you do and like you excel at so well, but could probably stand to just brush up your uh, handle and driving ability from a face-up game perspective. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is that something that you think, you know, as you start navigating this pre-draft process and start feeling out your, you know, potential fits in the pros that you're going to continue to work on to ensure that a, you don't get ripped off the dribble and B, you know, you don't find yourself in tough situations like this where you're drawn into charges. Are you trying to work yeah. on your game? Yeah. A little? yeah. That was a big thing for me. Um, I remember like my first year coming in, everybody used to take charges on me. And yeah. I really had to, yeah, I had to like slow my pace down, but it was like a real big problem for me though. My, um, my senior year, but once like, you know, I started like working out more with my with one of my coaches. You know, he started giving me more moves, so I had different things I can do when I touch the ball. So as the season went by, you know, that started to get a little bit better. Gotcha. Yeah, and then one more potential thing that you know, with the pressure that you put on the rim and how dynamic you are getting into the paint, might open up some mm -hmm. driving kick opportunities for you as well, which we'll kind of see in this one. So. You come up here, flash, fake the handoff, and then have a actually a really nice crossover here to get to your left and get into the middle here. Do you have any thoughts on maybe once you got to this situation and they collapsed, maybe what you could have done better in this situation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I could have um, hit Law in the corner. 
Right. And I had told him, yeah, I had noticed it like soon I got to the rim, but it was like too late at that point. But then I had told him like right after the play, I had to know I was sorry for not passing the ball in the corner because you know he was looking out for me, so no, so I got to look out for him too. Yeah, and I think that'll just you know that'll come naturally as you get a little more comfortable out on the perimeter here, and you know like we were saying, you draw so much attention, you're going to warrant so much help even as a pro that you're going to have a lot of opportunities to kick out to these guys. The floor is going to be more spaced. Think that if you add that element, it'll make you even that much more dynamic on the offensive end. So now we're going to uh, move on to your strengths on the defensive side of the ball. And mm -hmm. we're going to particularly highlight your ability to protect the rim. Uh, so you were the defensive player of the year in your conference, averaged, I think, two and a half blocks per game, maybe. Uh -huh. You have that seven foot three wingspan that you were alluding to earlier and you use it really well, right? Like you do a great job of covering up for your teammates mistakes and being that guy that anchors down the paint. This first one is just one-on-one -on -one post defense, right? This guy oh. tries to take a power dribble and go over his left shoulder for the little baby hook. Oh. Uh, you know, you react very well to it, but I was curious if your shot blocking prowess also is, uh, you know, partly fueled by your film study and getting an, a gauge as to what your opposition's tendencies are, what they tend to favor, what they like to do. Do you kind of try to play off of that and anticipate what's coming? Yeah, yeah, because like usually before, um, during the week before we like have a game, my um, my coach he'll give me like film on on a big man. Like like during that game, they told us um, all they bigs like do is seal up. Yeah, and that's that's how they like they mainly scored. Um, throughout the game. So what we had to do throughout their whole game was play behind and right. try to, to keep our hands up basically. But you no, know, um, I'm a big time shot block. I love shot block shots. So that was the first thing I went to as soon as they, he went up. Yeah, you played that perfectly, right? And he tries to sort of get into you, use some you know, low center of gravity and bump you off your spot, but you just kind of mm -hmm. take it and then have that explosiveness to just pop right off of two feet, send that shot packing. And, you know, saw a lot of that throughout the, course of the year and we're going to get into another play now this time it's against wisconsin so i like to, you know when i'm talking with someone such as yourself that you know went to a smaller school that you know some people might not be as familiar with to highlight how you perform against high major schools like wisconsin i think is uh you know can be enlightening as to how your game could translate when you take it up a level here right so mm -hmm. this highlights against wisconsin We'll let this run here starts backing down into the post do a great job here of kind of moving your feet and sticking with them uh do you want to maybe speak to and when you get ice out out on the wing here like what's going through your mind to contain this guy firstly and then once he starts trying to back you down how are you sort of combating that um i think it was a real big thing for me you know um through our practice, you know, we always do a lot of switch five and stuff, but we all switch, you know, so I got really used to having to guard the perimeter. And I don't know, to be honest, what he was thinking, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, you know, but maybe think, maybe it's just your instincts taking over in this circle. Yeah, but right? think like, about he, he's, he's nice, though. That's, that's probably like yeah. one of the few times I really stopped him because he was throughout the game, I guess I was probably blocking. I probably blocked the shot probably a few times, but he, he started to shoot. I throughout the game. He was making just about everything once he started shooting. Yeah, and so that's going to be something to be aware of, you know, as you take your game to the next level is when you're, you're matched up with guys, maybe a lot of the time you had a size advantage and these guys weren't maybe, you know, dynamic both as drivers and as shooters. When you mm -hmm. get to the next level, you're going to have guys that, you know, can stick it from deep, can get to the rim, can do a little bit of everything. And in this possession here, you did a great job of, you know, firstly containing, getting that first block, and then sticking with the play and cleaning it up with a second one here as well. Mm -hmm. But like you were saying, that guy had a, you know, he had a pretty nice game. He was getting some of what he wanted that particular game. Aside from that highlight, just know that at the next level, you're just going to have to be dealing with more dynamic all-around offensive players and kind of mm -hmm. staying locked in and engaged and, you know, working on, all the areas of your defensive game to be able to lock guys down like you did in that clip. Next one here, we'll see that they're kind of out on a little bit of a break here and you get up here and protect the rim. This guy thinks he has a clean path. 
So he comes in, does a little bit of a Euro step himself. And right here, it seems like, you know, you're not even necessarily gathering yet for your block. And it seems like he's about to go up. Do you have a good sense of, I guess, like when smaller guards are getting to the rim, do you have a good sense of like how to time out your shot block and know that you have a lot of like recovery time given your length and your ability to get up that you can kind of like lure them into thinking that they have some space? Oh uh, yeah, that, that was like a, a big thing for me. How, how fast I can get out the floor. Yeah, those were, the, those were, I think really the thing that was like messing with guards a lot. How fast I can get out the floor, and then half time like it'd be plays where they'll probably get past me, and I was able to like, recover so fast and get a block shot. Right, like the combo of your quick explosiveness off the ground, yeah. that wingspan, and just kind of like having a knack for the ball. I think a lot of guards can kind of get the sense that maybe they have you beat or maybe they might be able to get a clean look at the rim and you're able to kind of lure them into that and accumulate even more block shots by kind of uh, getting them discombobulated, making them think that they've got something when they don't. And this is just one more here. I mean, what's <laughs> going on in the celebration? Are you trying to be where the <laughs> out there? Send oh, it yeah. Out the Man, that, that was a big game, you know. That was, that was a huge game. The gym was packed, and they team talk a lot of noise that game. So I had had to follow up and talk as much as I can to them and just let, just let them know I'm there. Does uh, When you send a shot packing like that into the stands, does that kind of – I mean, that has to fire you up. That has to – you know, I mean, That's a home run. That's a home run. In there again, right? Yeah. <laughs> kind of light, light a fire under the rest of your team too, right? Oh, yeah. Facts, this facts. Is, I'm not sure if this is the first or second half, but it looks like it's uh, 17 minutes on the clock. So it seems like you're kind of sending an early statement that like, oh, yeah, that, that was the beginning of the game. So the game started. Yeah. So like, you know, that's got to really weigh on these guys the rest of the game that I might not want to test the paint as much. I might want to yeah. stick to the perimeter because Shamarcus is going to be waiting there for me. Right. Yeah, it really showing my intensity level. Yeah. Love to see that. Um, and I think we might have one more here. So this one is kind of highlighting your ability, again, to sort of uh, lock down on the perimeter first, move your feet, and then he tries to give you a little pump fake. You don't fall for it at all. And then you time out getting like a finger on that, wrestling the ball down to the floor, hustling, getting the jump ball. Just a you know great all-around defensive possession there. So the last segment we're going to do here is just potential improvement areas on the defensive end. Uh -huh. So you were your conference's defensive player of the year. You get all these blocked shots, like your great paint presence. And, you know, there's a lot of value to be had in that. But as you get to the next level, you're probably going to have to cover some guys out on the perimeter a little bit more often than you did uh, uh -huh. in school. So, you know, this guy, this is a tough, not an easy shot, right? Like he hits this from deep from probably about NBA range, but you know, you're just going to have to probably be aware that at the next level, more guys are going to be able to stick this and mm -hmm. that the scouting report is going to be, you're going to have to at least play up on them a little bit more. So not necessarily a bad play because maybe the scouting report there was that you'll live with that shot in college, but you're just going to have to get used to being out there in space more. And uh, these guys being able to pull up out of nowhere and hit these, right? Uh -huh. And this one here, is more of a uh, kind of giving up some space and uh, driving angle. So you get switched in a pick and roll here, right? Uh -huh. um, and, you know, the next level is going to be very pick and roll heavy. And depending on what team you're with, you know, your strategy might yeah, be switching. Yeah. There'll be some switching, right? And, you know, you're a decent lateral athlete. It's not like you can't move your feet with some of these guys, but just, uh -huh. you know, could, could probably stand to, you know, just get a little more comfortable in these situations. He kind of gets a half step on you and then just kind of bumps you off the spot there. And again, tough runner, maybe you live with a tough runner, but I think the main point of all these clips here at the end is just, you're going to have to play out on the perimeter more than you did in school and just be ready for that, right? Be ready to be able to switch, be ready to be able to kind of lock up drivers and it's not going to be, you know, as frequent that you're able to just kind of stay in the paint and protect the rim, right? Yeah. Is there anything in particular, I guess, from that perspective that, you know, 
in the next few months leading up to the draft and leading up to, you know, eventually signing a professional contract? Is there anything that you're working on or planning to work on now to kind of make yourself like a more viable perimeter defender? Uh, really just uh, a lot of just using my, my footwork. Like today I have to go out and go to Sanford work on my footwork. So I think that's a big thing for me. Have to just been a stay in front of the ball. For sure. Yeah. Like working on stuff like that will go a long way. And even if it's just able to make you capable of playing a half a step closer to your guy on the perimeter and then being able to open your hips and recover more easily, like those split second half steps make all the difference in the world and being able to cover out on the perimeter. And you do a solid job already, but that, you know, if you can just get slightly more comfortable, I think that'll just open things up for you even more and make sure that you're able to stay on the floor regardless of defensive scheme or opposing personnel, right? Cool, man. Well, hey, that's all the clips that I have. Uh, I think that you're a super interesting kind of under the radar prospect that has haven't got a ton of buzz yet. But I think as teams start sort of digging into the tape and they have more time now to play catch up on their scouting from the season, you know, they'll start to realize that you have a lot to offer and uh, are an intriguing mid-major prospect. And, you know, I know that your your conference in particular has only had, I think, 14 NBA players ever. Uh, yeah. And one of them being Joe Dumars from your school particularly, school, yeah. right? Uh, have you been able to, you know, engage with Joe Dumars at all? Have you had the chance to meet him and speak with him about how, he made that uh, transition uh, to the NBA and have you been able to like garner any knowledge from like how he did that and apply that to your journey now? Uh, to be honest, man, we had one chance to see him and that was, um, I think it was like around begin- yeah, the beginning of this year. And during that time I had to go home for a family emergency. So I ended up missing when he ended up coming to our practice and talking to everybody. And yeah. I really want, yeah, I really want to go ahead and talk to him and um, ask him about you know, saying his legacy here. Cause it's, it's huge, no? They got him everywhere, though. I'm sure. Got, yeah, his jersey's retired. He got like a big old some in, like in front of the gym, like with his number on it, and tell everything he did. Yeah. Well, hey. Well, with you as one of now the greats in program history, maybe if you could link up with him and just pick his brain, that would be that'd be good for just getting. Yeah, out of that'd what be great, have, right? Yeah, that'd be great. Be one another um another person that been hit down in Lake Charles. For sure. Well, hey, uh, before we wrap up here, uh, you know, really enjoyed digging into the tape there, but uh, wanted to kind of kick it over to you now since you're not able to really interview in person or work out in person. Want to give you the chance to, you know, explain to these teams who you are and what you bring to the table. So who is Shamarcus Kennedy? And if a team were to bring you into their organization, what can they expect from you both on and off the court? Well, on the court, you know, you can expect an everyday guy, man. I'm going hard every day, you know, doing whatever I can, you know, to be able to get on the court. And, you know, very respectful, man. That's a big thing. You know, everybody, like, really likes me, you know what I'm saying? You know, the whole coach staff loved me, all my teammates, like the community. You know, I'm a real good guy. You know, off the court, you know, I try to, like, at least try to be friends with everybody, man. I'm, I'm real friendly. Hey, I mean – you know, every team is looking for a guy who can come in and kind of fit in with the rest of the team that's well liked by their teammates, that's not going to be, you know, causing any locker room trouble. And that's, mm-hmm. you know, easy for the coaching staff to work with and to teach and develop, right? And it seems like that you've maintained that attitude throughout your college career, are obviously going to continue doing that going forward. And, you know, willingness to learn and improve is huge for, you know, any team to invest in a player going forward. So, Shamarcus, really enjoyed chatting with you. Uh, going to be following along with your pre-draft process here and wishing you the best of luck going forward. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me, man. Of course. Stay safe. Uh, you too.